Atlanta Business Chronicles Biz. Sponsored by Georgia Power. And Go Beyond Profit. Good morning. Thanks for joining us and happy Father's Day. Let's get right to our lead story this morning. Emory University makes another investment in the city's Sono District. It bought just shy of an acre near Atlanta's former Peachtree Pine homeless shelter. The $8 million purchase comes just six months after the university paid $6 million for Peachtree Pine, which closed in 2017. The current acquisition suggests more momentum for Sono, the area south of North Avenue. There's at least $1 billion worth of development planned for that area. There's also a chance Georgia Tech could expand south and buy some property there. New developments in the BB&T SunTrust merger. The combined bank now has a name, Truist. Its headquarters will be in the Hearst Tower in Charlotte, North Carolina, the building's landlord, Atlanta-based Cousins Properties. Employees from multiple cities, including Atlanta, will begin moving in August. The $66 billion deal makes Truist the sixth largest bank in the country. Meanwhile, one of BB&T's signature events is getting a little bigger. The ninth annual BB&T Atlanta Open will be in a new location this year, still at Atlantic Station, but at the Pinnacle Lot. That's where Cirque du Soleil performs. The five-acre site gives the tennis tournament more space and adds room for fan festivities. Also, the event has a new partner this year. Atlanta-based First Data Corporation inked a six-figure deal to be the Open's first presenting sponsor. The BB&T Atlanta Open takes place next month, July 20th through the 28th. Calls for film production companies to pull out of Georgia were met last week with requests for reason. Democrat Stacey Abrams met with studio executives in Hollywood. She urged them to stay and fight Georgia's new anti-abortion law. This, as a growing number of companies, including Disney, Netflix and Warner Media, have said they might reconsider doing business in Georgia. Abrams told industry leaders that a boycott of the state will have a trickle-down effect, hurting a variety of businesses and workers. As many as 92,000 jobs are tied to Georgia's film sector. Last year, it had a $9.5 billion impact on Georgia's economy. Later in our show, we'll welcome two guests who will help us take a deep dive into the business implications beyond just the film industry of Georgia's anti-abortion law. Several charities with ties to Atlanta philanthropist Bernie Marcus will get a financial boost. The funds are in honor of his 90th birthday. A group of Atlanta A-listers helped Marcus celebrate the milestone birthday with dinner and a fundraiser. They raised more than $117 million. The money will be distributed to four Marcus nonprofits, including the Georgia Aquarium, Grady Hospital, the Marcus Autism Center, and the Shepherd Center. Dinner guests included Governor Brian Kemp and Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. Even President Donald Trump made an appearance via video, thanking Bernie Marcus for years of friendship. Coming up, it's a utility giant with an altruistic mission. Southern Company President of External Affairs, Chris Womack, shares how he's fueling a bigger purpose. And as we go to break, it's time for our biz quiz. When Georgia Power was first established in 1883, what was its original name? Georgia Southern Light Company, Atlanta Electric Lighting Company, Georgia Electric Light Company of Atlanta, Georgia Lightbulb Company. We'll have the answer when we come back. 